Hey guys, let's talk about a few cards that have been really spiking in price due to Commander. Now, Commander, we know that there's wizards, there's dragons, there's vampires, and there are cats. All of these are viable. As long as they have not reprinted, like your dragon, Scion of the Your Dragon, which used to be a $10 plus card, but now it's been reprinted, so it's probably going to be a $2 card. And that would be if, if it hits $2 or even $2.50, I'm going to buy a lot of them. Just like I bought a lot of Gisela. Gisela was like $2 to $3 at one time because she was in the Angel Commander deck. Now she's not... Well, I haven't checked the price yet. I assume she's not $2 to $3 anymore. Anyway, Patreon Wizard has spiked from pretty much a $5 card for the last, I don't know, 10 years, or not, not 10, too so much, five, six, eight years, and now it's a $23 card. Triple blue is perfectly fine for a wizard deck. Speaking of wizards spiking, this card has been under $5 for some time, and now it is $20. It has the benefit of returning target wizard you control to your own to its owner's hand, protecting them from removal. And it doesn't come into play untapped. So that is why this card, typically when you see spikes in the cards, lands go fast. Lands that are highlighting like zombie lands or beast lands, if there was a beast EDH deck. Should there be a griffin deck? There's like a griffin canyon. Each of these tribes typically has one or two lands which are very good because they're only upside, right? So you add one generic, which Wizards, uh, Wizards does cost a lot in terms of triple blue, blue, red, green, or ah, blue, red, black, different combinations, but this is good enough and it's old enough. That's the key here old cards now bidding has also gone up it is a tribal uh, being that it is tribal it is very very good and having the graveyard effect it has also been below five dollars now it's no longer five dollars so remember we had multiple commander decks every year 2013 we had commander deck and 14 we had another one 15 we had one 16 we had one and this card didn't start going up, especially the wizard cards and the cat cards, until the themes were announced that it's cats, vampires. Vampires are kind of strange. Vampires is more likely to go up naturally because there's more people interested in that EDH deck organic, or just originally. So you don't need to make a vampire commander deck to get people interested in making a vampire commander deck. Now it helps, but for something like Cat Tribal or Wizards where it's not as supported heavily, filling in the gaps, that pushes it over the edge. Now, let's talk about this cat. Uh, the cat has slightly gone up in price. I am going to go ahead and say that this is one of the better cats you can get. Uh, it's one of the better cats because it generates cats. So if it attacks, you get a 1-1 cat. And if it blocks, you get a 1-1 cat. Now the cats are, they're going to want tokens. They're going to want cat tokens. This is not a bad way to generate those cat tokens. It's obviously on color. I like it that it is a mythic from a set. Born of the Gods was an uh, awful set in terms of value. Very bad, very low expected value. If you were to buy a Born of the God booster box, don't do it. Just don't do it. I was reading an article previously about MTG Finance people buying these booster boxes at like 70 or $72 and they were really happy. And just don't do it. But if you were to buy a single Brimaz, I think Brimaz has a lot of room to move because those cat tokens are actually relevant because they're cat tokens. Now another, Another one of these old Commander 2015, it's so funny to think it's old. I'm pretty sure this was in the Gisela deck, the Angel deck, and Urza's Incubator. 
obviously tribal, obviously good. So this card has been going up in price. I could see it hit. It is a reprint, and it's a reprint in a commander product two years ago, which doesn't... If it was never reprinted, this card would be sky high, right? This card would be so expensive right now, but is reprinted. So I think there is a limitation as, I think limitation for most reprinted cards will be $10. Um, I don't see it being more than that, uh, primarily because there's just too many of them out there. But definitely a good target to trade into something that if you had purchased at the low which looks like it was two dollars and fifty cents you would have made some good money on already and there are new there are cards that are going to are going to be in every single commander deck that are two dollars now or two dollars after a period of release maybe after 90 days that will be six dollars or ten dollars in the future Prismatic Omen. Now, one of the other core things is the five color dragon deck. That's kind of relevant. That's five colors. And anytime you can produce more mana, or in this case, mana of any type, you need to pick up the card. As I've said many times, this card was also under $5. Shadow Moor is my favorite favorite set i remember playing it and thinking wow this is so creative and these cards are so cheap and one day these cards will be expensive and then one day the cards on a whole became expensive at the same time now i didn't realize they were i thought it would be more like sequenced oh this card went up oh this card went up but essentially the entire shadow more block is like on fire right now from commons like devoted druid to rares like prismatic omen to just everything else. Even Rune Halo is worth money. Like, you have to understand, when I was playing Magic and Shadow Moor, Rune Halo was considered like one of the worst cards. It didn't make any sense. Why would you play it? Eve Tide is also very good. Uh, Crumbling Ashes. I do want to point out this card. When a card goes up and it's an uncommon, as long as it's an uncommon from an old set, there's probably less copies of it than a rare, so it can steady at the $7 price point, which it currently is right now. That's actual true demand. There's not many of these out there. Shadow Moor was a very unpopular set. It just was not popular. Like I cannot explain why, because I love the set, but people... I remember going to my local game store in Midtown, New York, and no one... A lot of people play during RTR. Very few people play during Shadow Moor. I think it was one of the lows. I'm not ex entirely sure why that was the case, but that store that I used to go to eventually bankrupt because probably because Shadow Moor <laughs> sales were so poor. All right, so I just want to point this out of uh, when this started happening. So I was interested to know when people started buying these uh, older cards. Such so uh, and it was Battle for Zendikar. As you see, Battle for Zendikar, this card was like a dollar. Now it's forty-two dollars because of buyouts. Because of uh... now this format that I've been told exists, but I've never seen anyone interested in playing it. Ninety-three, ninety-four, where you can play these older cards. I'm not sure if this is due to it being considered idiot's pimp. I have multiple copies of this card and I have multiple copies of it because previously when I bought my bulk, which was probably during RTR, this was considered junk and rightfully so. Now this junk card is $42. Now spirit link junk card is a lot of money. Like all these cards that I used to give away to patrons for like nothing because at that time they were worth nothing are now worth a lot of money and luckily i kept quite a bit of them i kept all the beta ones talking about lands that just are surprising in terms of value shadow Moor. if you had to tell me which one of these shadow Moors ones would be the most valuable i would definitely pick the blue one because i thought the blue one the scrying effect was kind of decent but it turned out it was the white one yes this is not a well-known fact but Miss Veil Plains is a $5 card. So it comes in play tap, you pay a white, you put target creature in your graveyard on the bottom of your library, then you play this ability only if you control two or more white permanents. 
Now, very fascinating because when I played, this was considered, why would you ever do this? Why would you ever use this effect? And you, even when um, ED8s became popular during, I want to say original Zendikar is when ED8s got invented around that time. Mm, yes, I want to say original Zendikar is when ED8s popularity increased a lot. And even then, no one used this card. As you can see from RTR, it has steadily gone up. And it's not like, oh, this got bought out or anything. It's just been a steady, organic growth. If I had to guess which of these lands, it's kind of like guessing Force of Will, right? Force of Will, I just was very lucky in the fact that I was collecting sets of each of them. But Contingent was the one I wanted. I have a lot of Mistvale planes, but I was actually trying to get a lot of the blue one, which I think is Moon Mist Veil or something. I don't remember what it is because it's not relevant financially anymore. So I was trying to pick up each of them and New Belania. Or, there was a bunch of these random ones from these sets. And I was like, all right, I will get the blue one. And then people, and I would also trade for the white one because why not? It's pennies on the dollar, right? And it turned out the white one was... $5. <laughs> Crazy. Anyway, bye guys.